objects are mostly empty space. All that is necessary for one object to pass through another object is the right alignment of the particles in the two physical objects. This is no problem for the one who created the human body. Another argument that's used against Jesus' resurrected physical body is the elements of the physical body decay. Well, some have argued in favor of an immaterial resurrection body on the grounds that a physical resurrection body would simply would imply a crassly materialistic view of resurrection. Oh, and hey, this is an argument against the prophet and many of the early brethren and against Mormonisms to this day, mind you. Listen to an evangelical scholar's refutation of this argument. A crassly materialistic view of resurrection. This is according to which the scattered fragments of decomposed corpses were to be reassembled. In modern science, however, it is known that the physical body remains physical, even though the molecules in it change every seven years or so. There are also biblical grounds to argue that Jesus' resurrection body possessed the same physical molecules as his pre-resurrection body, for unlike other human bodies, Jesus' body did not become corrupt while in the tomb. Even if there were some initial dissolution involved in his death, there was no eventual decay. Hence, the same basic matter of Jesus' pre-resurrection body was in his resurrected body. So the argument that belief in a physical resurrection body is crassly materialistic is mistaken. So evangelicals, you've got to quit using that against we Mormons when we teach this also. Paul wrote, Food is for the stomach and the stomach is for food, but God will do away with both of them. 1 Corinthians 6.13 Because of this verse, it's argued that the resurrection body will not have the anatomy or the physiology of the earthly body. However, this inference is unjustified. First, when Paul wrote that God will destroy both food and the stomach, he was referring to the process of death, not to the nature of the resurrection body. Secondly, while the resurrection body does not need to eat, it does have the ability to do this. Luke 24, 30, 42 through 43, John 21, 12 through 13, Acts 10, 41, so on and so forth. Another argument Geisler says is used is the resurrection is different from resuscitation. Some have argued that Jesus' body was not material because his resurrection was not a mere resuscitation of a physical corpse. True, Jesus' resurrection was not a mere resuscitation. Resuscitated corpses died again. Jesus' resurrection body was immortal. He conquered death. Hebrews 2.4, or 2.14 I should say. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 55. Whereas merely resuscitated bodies were eventually overcome again by death. However, the fact that Jesus was the first to be raised in an immortal body does not mean it was an immaterial body. Nor does it follow that since Jesus' resurrection body could not die, it could not be seen. Now this is important. This is, uh, this is our Mormon view, believe me. The immortality is not necessarily invisible. Now remember what the creeds teach about Christ. All that the Father is, the Son is also. Fully God, fully human. Christ has a body. You want God with a body? Norman Geisler is presenting him to you. B.H. Roberts did the same. Blake Osler's doing the same in his book, The Attributes of Mormon God, of the, uh, the Attributes of God, The Mormon View, so on and so forth. This is it. It's astonishing. Nor does it follow that since Jesus' resurrection body could not die, it could not be seen. The immortal is not necessarily invisible. Here again, the resurrection body differs from resuscitation. Not because it is immaterial, but because it is immortal. The argument that Jesus appeared in a different form is discussed. Some presuppose or suppose that after the resurrection, we cannot rule out the possibility that the visible form of Jesus had altered in some mysterious way, delaying recognition of him. Well... The word for form, 
morph, can simply apply to an outward appearance. The words another form in Mark 16.12, which scripture is used in this argument, are an obscure and an isolated reference on which it is unwise to base any significant doctrinal pronouncement. In other words, you can't just take a scripture here and a scripture there and argue against God having an immortal, eternal body. Jesus is fully God. All that Christ is, the Father is. This refutes the Trinity. I'm here to tell you. This is powerful. Not He didn't say that. I'm saying that. All that Christ is, the Father is. That's purely biblical doctrine. Whatever a different form means, it certainly does not mean a form other than a physical flesh and bones, and not a spirit. See, in short, there's no scientific, there's no biblical, and there is certainly no theological reason for forsaking the historic evangelical view that Jesus' resurrection body is a literal, physical body. Now, he says that's an evangelical view. It's also a Mormon view. You want God with the body? Norman Geisler's presenting him. Very powerfully so. All the arguments, in fact, used to prove the immaterial nature of the resurrection body, they fall short of the mark. Furthermore, they run headlong into an overwhelming evidence that his resurrection body was a literal, physical body of flesh and bones. This is precisely what Joseph Smith testified of in his first vision of God the Father and Jesus Christ. They are the same type of being. Absolutely. There's no room for views to deny that Jesus' body, both before and after the resurrection, was a literal, physical body that could be handled and touched. Jesus said, Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. Luke 24.39 Jesus' resurrection body was one of actual human flesh. Sarix. Acts 2.31 says sarix. That's the Greek word for human flesh. But it was incorruptible and immortal, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 42 and 53. Paul wrote that in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, Colossians 2.9. Jesus certainly ate after the resurrection, it would have been deception on Jesus' part if he had offered his ability to eat physical food as a proof of his bodily resurrection if he had not been raised in a physical body. He says that on page 163. On page 164, another unmistakable evidence of the physical nature of Jesus' resurrection body is the fact that it has the physical wounds from his crucifixion. And this is where he showed doubting Thomas and all that. This same body ascended into heaven where he is still seen as a lamb standing as if slain. Revelations 5, 6. This is very interesting. When he is seen, he is called the lamb, but it's his physical body that is seen in heaven in the book of Revelation. When Christ returns, he will return even in his visible second coming, for John declared, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. Revelation 1.7 Zechariah wrote, They will look upon me whom they had pierced. This is very significant. They will see his physical body, in other words. This is the idea of this is evident that the body was that one which was resurrected. This is the same physical body that had died. And it's the same physical body that was resurrected. It also ascended into heaven. And it's going to return to earth. Acts 1, 10 through 11. Jesus was physically recognizable in 